ready for this? The Capital Evening Show with Roman Kemp is up next. So let's get straight into it. If you don't like the way I talk, then why am I on your mind? If you don't like the way I rock, then finish your glass of wine. And tonight I'm alive in a dollar sign. Guaranteed I can blow your mind. The UK's number one, number one hit music station. Hello, welcome back to the EGX developer sessions here at EGX 2016. This next session is one I'm personally quite excited about as it's about a franchise I've been playing since I was a little babby boy. So here to talk about the evolution of Oddworld game design, please welcome to the stage, Matt Glanville. Thank you. Hello. <clears throat> Uh, hi, I'm Matt. Uh, I'm a game designer at Freema Studio, uh, and we are currently working on Oddworld Soulstorm, uh, which is the latest in the Oddworld series. Uh, it's due out end of next year. Uh, I was also the designer on Oddworld New and Tasty, which some of you might have played, uh, and that was a full from the ground up remake of the original classic Abe's Odyssey. Uh, today I'm going to be talking to you about uh, how we have revived the Oddworld franchise for uh, the modern audience, uh, some of the changes that we've made between Abe's Odyssey and New and Tasty, uh, some of the lessons that we learned in the process, and how we're taking our design philosophy forward into Soulstorm. Um, as a game designer, I focus primarily on character interaction, uh, level design, stuff like that. Uh, so I'll talk a little bit about uh, visual design and where it overlaps with that, but I'm mainly focused on interaction. So Oddworld is a very unique series, as you probably know. Um, it's a series that's always stood out from the crowd. Um, back when every game was always about uh, empowering players with bigger weapons and more muscles, um, Oddworld took away all your weapons and cast you as a skinny floor cleaner uh, wearing a loincloth who's got stitched up lips and a flatulence problem. Um, at these core, these games have always had strong messages uh, about exposing the dark side of globalization. Um, and they've done so with a fat dose of humor, sarcasm, irony, uh, and always kind of poking fun at these serious messages, but still getting to the heart of the message at the same time. Um, and they've always told their stories from the point of view of the underdog. Uh, Abe really doesn't want to be the hero. He's kind of thrust into this situation against his will. Um, and for the first part of Abe's Odyssey, he's just trying to escape alive without being shot, ground up, blown up, electrocuted, and so on. Um, the idea is really to get players to care about Abe and to want to look after him. And actually, the, the role of the player is kind of more of like a spiritual guardian angel to Abe um, as they're trying to guide him through this, uh, through danger. And so through Abe's struggle, uh, we get to see the effects of the greedy mega corporations and how that ripples down to affect the workers and the wildlife. Uh, the nasty scrabs might look like horrible monsters, but really they're just wild animals and they're victims in this situation as well. Uh, so the result of this is a strong sense of concern for global ecological issues and compassions for the individuals who are involved. Uh, this carries right through into the gameplay because players are tasked with saving their fellow workers. Uh, and really, uh, whether A brings them to safety, freedom, or a grisly end, that's really on you as the player. So who played this game here? 
Oh, that's actually pretty much everyone, so that's really cool. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, for anyone who's unfamiliar with it, which is probably only a few people from judging that, um, it was a 2D puzzle platformer first released on the PlayStation 1 back in 1997. Uh, it tells the story of this factory worker called Abe. Uh, he one day discovers that his Glucken employers are uh, farming all of their livestock to the point of extinction. And um, as a last resort to protect their bottom lines, um, they're going to turn all of Abe and his fellow workers into the next treat on the menu. Uh, so, of course, it's up to Abe to lead them all to freedom and bring down the Gluckens. Uh, it was incredibly popular when it was first released. Um, but as you might expect, expect from a game from 1997, it was not without its limitations. Uh, the game had these kind of static flip screens, as we call them. Um, so the player viewed like a very static single uh, area of the environment. And when they walk off one side of the screen, it cuts to the next one, and so on and so forth. It's in this kind of grid-based system. Uh, by the way, there was this clever kind of screen wipe effect whenever you did that as you walked off the screen. And that was just a, a simple trick to kind of draw your eye to the other side of the screen. Um, so they may be very slick and look beautifully rendered for the time, uh, but really, these kind of static backdrops existed because of hardware limitations, uh, because you know, the PS1 hardware was not really all that powerful. Um, and everyone at the time was making 3D games, uh, but because it was still early days for 3D tech, it was very hard to get that to look good. Uh, so having this pre-rendered look meant that you could make it look a lot nicer and get more the kind of film quality to it. Uh, and it also means it can stand out from the crowd a lot more. Uh, but it does mean that the camera couldn't move, and it put a lot of constraints on the gameplay. Uh, the gameplay was grid-based, and all the animations were pre-rendered. So it meant that everything was very kind of methodical, and you had to carefully plan your steps. Uh, and that really had wide-ranging impacts. Uh, it was a very strict puzzle game. Um, so the puzzle, puzzle solutions were largely predetermined. Uh, there was usually only one way that you could solve problems. Um, and if you got it wrong, that usually meant you died straight away. And it could be quite frustrating at times. Um, it did create a sense of heightened vulnerability um, and, and danger. And that really resonated with some people. And it certainly uh, lends itself well to Abe's struggle. Um, but there were a huge number of players who they loved Oddworld, they loved the environment, they loved the setting, the characters, the story, but they just couldn't get even past the first level because it was so difficult. And I've, unfortunately, I include myself in that group. Um, and any developers among you will know that you really you want to see people get to the end of the game and see everything you've made for them because otherwise it's just wasted, you know? Um, so um, <clears throat> not everyone is at the same skill level as well. So how can you really know what's easy enough for one person is easy enough for everyone? Uh, so this is kind of how we've come to move away from this kind of harsh punishment uh, from future games. Which brings me on to New and Tasty. Uh, so after a few sequels, Abe's Exodus, Munch's Odyssey, and Stranger's Wrath, uh, we started working on a full remake of Abe's Odyssey. Um, we polled the community, and fans overwhelmingly said that we should call it New and Tasty because it's named after the, the meat products in the, uh, in the game. Uh, this was finished and released on the PlayStation 4 in 2014, and subsequently on PC, Xbox One, uh, PlayStation Vita, PlayStation 3, and Wii U. And who here got around to playing this one? That was pretty cool. There's almost the same number of people put their hands up. So great. Um, so for anybody who played both versions, uh, you'll know how this game took the same story right down to the script, the same environments, the same general structure. Um, but we completely revised the gameplay and the level design, uh, and we now render it in full 3D. Uh, we took all of the original levels as our starting point, almost as a blueprint. Um, and then we kind of squashed and molded them to meet our new requirements and to, to uh, smooth over some of the cracks. Uh, actually, we even added a few new levels as well, just to really show off the new stuff that we added. Uh, but the three most significant changes that we made were we shifted to an analog controller, uh, sorry, analog camera and controls away from the static flip screens that I mentioned earlier. 
uh, we added a more freeform approach to puzzle solutions, and we introduced less harsh punishment for players' mistakes. And I'll go into each of these in a bit more detail. Uh, so the analog camera, uh, we're no longer constrained by the uh, hardware limitations of the PlayStation 1, and this meant we could have a full 3D rendered world. But of course, we maintain the same great 2D gameplay that players know and love. Uh, the camera now freely follows Abe as he moves around. We can slide and zoom and tilt and pan and all these effects. And we can really get in and show the action. We can zoom out and show the scale of the environments. Uh, and you know, we, can, we can do a lot of cool stuff to show off the environment. Uh, but this came with a lot of knock-on side effects. Because, as I mentioned, the static flip screens were so deeply ingrained into the gameplay, a lot of that now had to change. Uh, so in the original game, you could use those screen boundaries almost as a, a kind of a warning that maybe something dangerous is coming up. And if you're running headlong across the screen, you can kind of slow down just before you reach the edge, and then you just creep over very carefully, like, okay, there's something nasty there, I'm going to go back. But you can't really tell where that boundary is anymore when the camera's just constantly flowing and, and following Abe. So we were finding in playtest that a lot of people were just kind of running headlong into danger and getting killed. Um, so we introduced a lot of uh, cues in audio and visual effects uh, to try and give them a bit more warning about what was coming up. Uh, so for example, the sligs, who are the, the enemies who you sometimes see sleeping, um, we added these little zeds that float out of their heads and we always try and bring them on screen from, from far away so that you get as much of a heads up as possible. And we always tilt the camera in the direction that Abe's facing and give it a lot of view of what's ahead. Um, it also became a lot less clear when you're in range of some of the hazards. Uh, there are these things called chant suppressors. Some of you will know um, the big kind of floating drones which will zap you if you try and use your chant power. Um, and before, it was just a case of if you chant and there's one on screen, you get zapped. It was a very simple rule. It's very clear because you could see one on screen, you knew you were going to get zapped. Whereas now, it's a little more ambiguous because you might have uh, you might have one that's kind of partially on screen, or you might have one that's very close, but actually uh, it's, the camera's pointing the other direction. So it all just became a lot more fuzzy and hard to work out. Um, so we did a lot of stuff there where we turned it basically into like a radius. Um, and if you're stood inside that radius, you'll get zapped. And we made sure that that was always really clear by uh, pulling the camera out, framing these things on screen if you're in range. Um, making them light up when you're in range and then dim again if you, if you walk away. Uh, we found you can just never make these things too obvious. Um, and we don't want players to get frustrated and bounce off of that kind of stuff. And then another thing that we found suddenly broke were the shadow zones. Uh, so in the original game, there was a section here which was uh, spots of darkness that Abe could hide in. And that worked really well in 2D when it was completely flat. You just kind of walk into this black patch and Abe just disappears into the silhouette. Um, as soon as we turned that into 3D, it just it broke. And you could have cameras at an angle. I mean, if you tilt the camera this way, you'll see Abe's kind of silhouetted against the bright background. And it just breaks the illusion that he's hiding. Um, so what we ended up doing was adding these steam vents, which are like underfloor uh, vents that spew all the steam out. And Abe can stand in those, and he's hidden. Um, so that was in keeping with the factory environment. It looks completely in place, um, and it was much less ambiguous as to whether you're standing in the right spot or not. Uh, so the more freeform solutions to the puzzles, and um, the goal here was really to empower players with choice. Uh, I don't mean empower in the kind of more weapons sense, because that's not in keeping with Abe's character. He overcomes his, uh, his obstacles with uh, wit and... and, uh, and and outsmarting his oppressors and finding clever solutions. So a lot of our puzzles and our obstacles were redesigned to allow players to find their own way through. Uh, and this means players can feel like they're figuring it out for themselves, uh, rather than using trial and error uh, until they find the one single solution that the level designers intended. And this also has the benefit of giving players different stories to tell about their journey through the game. Uh, and that's really something we want to explore more in our next game, Soulstorm. And finally, our last major change was to punish players less. Uh, this wasn't just about 
making the game flat out easier. Although we did add a couple of easier difficulty modes for people who did struggle with it too much. Um, ultimately, we want to create a more dynamic experience. Uh, we don't really want players to be just making the same mistake over and over and over and dying in the same spot in the same way over and over again. Uh, we want a kind of experience where uh, it's, it's more dynamic and maybe you make a mistake, but you're skillful enough to recover from it and you can get out of there alive if you're good enough, but you're only just scraped by and you're going to keep running and then you run into another danger and then, uh, you know, it's just absolute chaos. We find those kinds of experiences much more thrilling than... I did it wrong and I died. I'll do it again. Um, and the idea of being less punishing uh, doesn't just cover gameplay challenges and obstacles, but it also comes right down to simple things like pulling a lever. Uh, so in the original game, you had to stand Abe on a square next to a lever. You had to face the lever and pull, uh, press the button to pull it. Whereas now, it's just an area of effect. So if you're stood near a lever, even if you're facing the wrong way, we just automatically snap a round and he pulls it. So we really put in a lot of uh, effort into smoothing over the cracks and the wrinkles like that, um, trying to kind of second guess what players wanted to do and just doing it for them because you don't really want to be struggling with simple things like pulling a lever. You want to be struggling with avoiding enemies and not dying. That's the fun stuff. Uh, but we know full well that there's a percentage of players who love the hardcore challenge. Uh, and, and for them, we made sure we kept in a hard mode, which retained all of the old school one hit kills. And as soon as the game was done on PS4, uh, we set about building the first all new Oddworld content since Stranger's Wrath, uh, which was Alpha's Escape. Uh, this is a brand new uh, downloadable set of levels, which focuses on the extra difficult aspects of the, of the gameplay. Uh, with a few new quirks and mechanics in a forgotten area of Rupture Farms. Uh, that's available as DLC on PS4, PC, and Xbox One. So making changes to a beloved classic is a daunting task, to say the least, let me tell you. Uh, but overall, the reception we got was, was really good. Uh, we had a very strong Metas Metacritic score. Uh, user ratings on PSN, Xbox Live, and Steam are just more than we could have hoped for, and we really are so grateful for all of the kind and comments that we've had. It just makes all of the hard work worth it. So thank you so much for anyone who's, who's said kind things. Um, some of the best compliments that we received uh, were when long-term fans of the series said that the game was exactly how they remembered it from back in the day, but then when they went back and played the original, they realized just how much we changed and just how many of the wrinkles we'd smoothed out and in some cases, they even found it a little bit difficult to go back to the old game because they were so well adjusted to the new one. Uh, so that was really nice to hear. Um, but having said that, there were a few points uh, that we addressed post-release based on player feedback. Uh, one of the big ones was the controls. And during development, we strove for what we thought worked the best uh, in terms of controls. But despite this, there were still some people who who really liked the controls of the original game. They had this kind of very digital kind of setup. Um, so we added a few options so that you can get something that's a lot closer to that kind of thing. Uh, so now you can hold a button to run rather than having it on the analog stick for analog uh, movement. And we added a button, uh, the sideways hop, which lets you basically just push one button to jump to the side rather than having to jump and move. Uh, we added some uh, graphical options, the post-processing effects and the bloom and the glow. It was not something that everyone was a huge fan of, so uh, we added some options in the menu to turn those off and some uh, extra graphical options on PC. Uh, so it gives you more of a kind of purer display and it helps a little bit with the performance as well. And then the last major uh, point of contention, I guess, was the cross-game indie shout-outs. Uh, so, um, we collaborated with a few other indie developers um, towards the end of development. And the idea was we were going to try and spread the word about each other's games and help each other out a little bit. Um, and the way we were going to do that was put nods to each other's games in our own games. So we had all these billboard adverts in Rupture Farms, uh, which were for Oddworld products, like the Scrab Cakes, Paramite Pies, on the kind of orange billboards there. Um, and what we decided to do was swap some of those out so they were now adverts for the other indie games. 
Uh, so we always made sure we tucked them away in secret areas. Um, so they were quite hard to find, and they were almost kind of little Easter eggs. Um, and we always made sure that they were in-world details. They weren't like on-screen pop-ups, like, you know, sticking in front of your camera or anything like that. It was, we tried to keep it as subtle as possible. Um, but it didn't go down well with everyone. Some people felt it was breaking the fourth wall a little bit too much, and it was not really in keeping with the odd world universe. Um, we felt it was done in good faith. It was kind of in keeping with the, the spirit of the, the message of the game, which is the little guys helping each other out to get a leg up against the big hitters. Um, but, you know, still, it didn't go down too well with everybody, so we removed that from uh, every release after the initial PS4 version. So I've talked about how Abe's Odyssey evolved into new and tasty, uh, but how are we following that thread forwards into Soulstorm? Well, uh, first off, I should stress that despite a few recent stories, we have yet to announce a platform uh, for Soulstorm. Uh, we've shown it to a few partners and friends of the company, um, but we're entirely focused on making the game as good as it can be. Um, we're aware of the platforms we've got available to us, uh, but we can't discuss it any further, unfortunately, at this point. Uh, what we can talk about, though, is the general direction that we're headed. Um, so during New and Tasty, we were actively involved with the audience. Uh, the fans uh, named the game, they named a lot of the trophies in the game, and so on. Um, but with Soulstorm, we want to engage with the community even more. Uh, our social channel is going to be a lot more active on Twitter and Facebook and, and such. Uh, we're going to be showing a lot more off during development. We're not quite at that stage yet, but it's very close. Um, and we're going to be using opportunities like Twitch uh, to get feedback as much as possible and listen to what everybody thinks of what we're making. Uh, but currently, all we've shown are a few black and white renders of Abe. Uh, that's going to change. We've been building up concept art, renders, work in progress videos, and even the odd kind of gag reel when things inevitably go wrong, which they always do. Uh, and speaking of which, of the humor, um, Oddworld's always tried to balance the, the humor and the serious messages. Uh, in New and Tasty, we did find that we can get a lot darker with our, with our kind of tone and presentation, but we can't lose the element of humor because it's so integral to Abe's character. And it's, and it's an important contrast to that dark background. Uh, I described earlier how we uh, increased the range of options available to players between Abe's Odyssey and New and Tasty. And without giving away too much at this stage, that's definitely something we want to continue into uh, Oddworld Soulstorm and expand as much as we can. Um, we really want to give players the tools to forge their own way through the game and come up with their own solutions to problems, uh, and hopefully in ways that even we didn't think were possible. Uh, we're designing a lot of new systems and mechanics to, to allow that kind of stuff. So things like physics-based structures, uh, more opportunities for solving problems on the fly, and more free-form traversal through dynamic changing environments. Uh, it's going to be a lot less static than what's gone before. Uh, really, we want players to be able to solve problems their own way, and we want them to have unique stories to tell as a result of that. And of course, uh, we want them to be able to share those stories more easily. So we, uh, the idea is um, we want to help make that a lot more uh, easy for Twitch streamers and people who are sharing the game with others. We want to make it more uh, enjoyable for people who are watching. Um, and again, unfortunately, we can't really go into specifics just yet uh, because we want to make sure that we can uh, follow through on our promises. But we do listen to the fans, we listen to broadcasters, broadcasters in the community, uh, and we're aware of the sort of things that people are asking for there. So in terms of that replayability, uh, we want players to really be able to commit to their own play style. Uh, so if you want to save everyone in the game, and I do mean everyone, that's going to be possible now. Um, and indeed, that ties in closely with Abe's own sentiments. But if you're more of a masochist and you want to kill everyone, and again, I mean everyone, you're going to be able to do that too. And really, that reflects on you, the player, Abe's guardian angel. And leading on from that, we want to represent uh, the impact that our narrative is having on the uh, wider uh, society of Obworld. Uh, the karma system from some of the older games is going to tie heavily into the sense of consequence and moral responsibility. 
And you're going to see uh, Soulstorm having a much grander story on a more epic scale than what's, what's come before. Ultimately, though, we want to keep surprising newcomers and long-term fans. And the way Old World continues to achieve this is with its classic hallmarks, stunning visual scale, uh, solid gameplay, and memorable, humorous characters. But we want to surprise experienced fans as well and really make people shocked at what can happen, what, what an Oddworld game can be. We want to push the scale to an order of magnitude bigger than what you've seen before. We know there's a hunger from fans to see more of Abe, to find out what happens next, and to see what his future holds. And we hope that uh, Soulstorm is going to be able to answer some of those burning questions for you. So I just want to thank you all for attending. Um, for anyone who hasn't played New and Tasty or, uh, or Abe's Odyssey, which is, I know, a very small number of you here, uh, but we've just got a little thank you. On each of the doors, there's some Steam keys uh, which you can take on your way out. That's just a little thank you from us for attending today. Uh, also, we're going to be wandering around at EGX uh, for most of the day, so if you see any of us, just give us a prod, and uh, we'll be happy to chat. I think we've got some time for some questions. Uh, if anyone has a question, if you're able to walk up to the microphone just over here, and my friend Peter is going to join me. Well done. Thank you. Good job. Are you all right? Right after I drink some water. <laughs> Hi. Firstly, thank you for um, bringing us such a fantastic franchise. Thank you. Um, basically, uh, as you know, developers usually get their inspiration from different parts of whatever. Uh, what was the inspiration behind creating the whole universe of Oddworld? Uh, that's a really big question. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I mean, I guess really, this is a this is a question for uh, Lauren Lanning, who is the original creator of the series. who couldn't be here today, uh, but I know a lot of his influence comes from a, a quite a wide spectrum of things. So um, the two things which he always pulls together is uh, the X Files and Muppets, and like <laughs> where they meet in the middle is that kind of weird uh, conspiracy dark stuff and then uh, silly characters like flopping around and all over that. Um, so Oddwell kind of sits somewhere in the middle of that. Yeah, so Lorne came from a background of making movies. So when he got into games, he wanted to sort of bring that kind of movie quality to them. And that's to do with telling a story, but it's also to do with a visual presentation of them. Um, so, like Matt says, he really did aim for that kind of middle ground between like Disney and Tim Burton or, you know, that kind of weird kookiness. But it was really things that he saw from the movies and he had a vision for where he thought that video games could go as a medium and he saw it as a much better option for telling stories than something that you just sit down and like passively take part in like a movie. Thank you very much. Thank you. Don't be shy, guys. Come on. <laughs> Um, hello. Hi. I I just want to say I met one of my best friends through Oddworld, so it'll always have a special place to me. Uh, the thing I'm wondering: what are your personal races out of all the Oddworld creatures? Like personal favorites. Favorites. Um, uh, I like some of the live ammo from Stranger's Wrath. Yeah. Some of those guys are cute. <laughs> um, I think some of the like the classic paramites and scrabs from yeah. Odyssey. I think they're sticking people's memories a lot. Elam. Uh, You've got to love Elam. <laughs> <laughs> He's just this big, dumb beast. He's just happy to follow you around. It's just nice. Right, thank you. Thank you very much. Hi there. Hello. Hi. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, it seems like we're going... Ooh. All right. It seems like we're going um, and following A through the, the next game. Will there be any um, a development from a different a protagonist, like Stranger, like the the cancelled the, the game after Stranger? Do you want that? Yeah. Well, let us know that you want it. <laughs> you know, if the fans tell us that that's what they want, then that's 
where will it go? You know, we, um, we remade New and Tasty because Abe's Odyssey was kind of the linchpin for most of Oddworld fans, so that's something that everybody knew. So when we did the New and Tasty remake, that was really why, because it was something that people identified with already. Um, so it was kind of an easy sell for us. Um, and we've carried on with Oddworld Soulstorm because we think that uh, the fan base, um, Abe resonates with people as a character. People know Abe, he's probably our most famous character. So Soulstorm seemed like the logical place to go, was to follow his story, but nothing's off the table. So at the moment we're completely focused on Soulstorm, but all those ideas for the council projects that you might have heard about, they still exist. Um, all those characters, they still exist. You know, it's all, it's all fluid, but the ideas are there, and we will revisit them if that's what the people tell us that they want. Oh, so tell us that you want that, and we'll do it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, first of all, I do want to say, like, thank you for, like, remaking the game. It was nice to finish it 20 years later <laughs> on. Like, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> um, but one thing that I actually do remember from the Odyssey, we were actually on the back of the manual, kind of going on with the lady before me there, was the Quintology that it mentioned. Now, again, she's wanting the next. I'm here again saying, I'd like the next, like, what's after a, what's after Munch Stranger? And I'm just kind of wondering, because they had that on the, on the back of the instruction manual on the yeah. game. Now, you've said you've got some of them stories, develops and characters still. Are there any, I know you can't really say too much, but are there anything that you've got there that you would like to bring into the, into the future at all and like within the Abe universe and, well, et cetera? Well, speaking personally, yeah, I want to see it all. So <laughs> um, I want to see all the characters that like our hardcore fans will have heard of from previous projects that may have been shelved. But I, I do want to see what Abe can do next. Um, and there is sort of some ideas around where Abe's story is going. Um, when the Quintology was mentioned, there was a certain plan in place for that, uh, certain things. We don't count Exodus as part of the Quintology, so it was just like a, a bonus game. Uh, Munch is Quintology, but Strangers isn't. Strangers yeah. was like another bonus game, so technically we've released two of them. But times have changed and, you know, the ideas have changed and Maybe if we go on to make a Quintology for Oddworld, it's a Quintology of games that feature Abe. Maybe it'll be a Quintology of games that feature unique characters. It depends what our user base tells us that they want. Because as small indie developers, we kind of rely on you guys to help us with everything, with the marketing, with the like, focus groups. We don't do focus testing. Um, because we leave that up to you guys to tell us what you enjoy and what you don't necessarily enjoy so much, and we tweak it for the next project. Um, so if you guys are telling us that you want to see the Quintology as it was originally envisaged, then that's the direction we will head in. All those ideas are still there. Everything's, you know, it just depends what we think the market wants. Oh, awesome, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. All right, how you doing? Hi. Um, I was a big fan, obviously, of Abe's Odyssey itself, but it wasn't my favorite out of all the games so far. My favorite was Exodus. I loved the fact you could control your fart and stuff like that there. <laughs> um, question is, is there going to be a new and tasty 2 as Exodus? Uh, Have you thought about you it? To, yeah, well, um, <laughs> there's a, Soulstorm is a sequel to New and Tasty. So it's not... It's definitely not an Exodus remake. It's a brand new game, but it does have uh, certain areas. If you're a big fan of Exodus, you'll know certain areas. There will be places in Soulstorm where you might look at it and go, that seems like it's this area from Exodus, but it won't, it won't be identical. It'll be completely different, and there will be places in Soulstorm which are completely different and new environments that you haven't seen yet. Um, so. We're kind of talking about Soulstorm as a sequel to Abe's Odyssey or New and Tasty um, because it's a much bigger game, uh, but it touches on elements of Exodus. But Exodus was made in a hurry. Um, it wasn't necessarily the game that the company wanted to make at the time because it was made in such a hurry. So um, the ideas that were there for Exodus are now going into Soulstorm. 
and informing the way we make that brand new game. Fair enough. So, sort of, so it's terms like what Exodus should have been? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. That's a sort of answered my question as well, because I was going to ask if Soulstorm follows on from Exodus. Um, but I am now wondering, does that sort of mean Exodus' story is void, or will it sort of be retold through Soulstorm? It's kind of a retelling, yeah. Um, Soulstorm does follow on directly from New and Tasty. Um, I wouldn't say it's void, you know, it still exists. Uh, it's just, this is a, yeah, a, a new telling of that story. Thank you. Looking yeah. forward to it. Cool. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Thank you. Hello. Thanks for uh, coming to see us. I enjoyed the slideshow. Thanks for coming uh, to see us. My question <laughs> is: When Exodus came out, they produced like some promotional beer, some brew that came with it. Back then, I was too young to drink it. <laughs> when this comes out, can you make some more? I, re I really want to taste some tears. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do what we can. They might not be made of ground-up bones, though. Oh, that's going to be the same. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. We're done. All right. Well, thank you both so much for coming. Uh, it was really, really interesting. At the top of the hour, we've got a session on Jalopy. Its creator will be here to talk about the weirdest driving sim you've probably ever played. So don't miss that. But in the meantime, just uh, please, another round of applause. Thank you.